Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant of Grace Ministries YouTube channel. I'm Steve Williams, Jr., and I serve as pastor of this kingdom ministry. Uh, to everyone who's watching, we want to extend to you the love, the grace, and the peace of Jesus Christ. We appreciate you for choosing to watch today's message, and I pray that this Holy Spirit-inspired message will bless your entire being, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, the title of today's message is a phrase that I can truly say we don't like to hear. We don't like to hear this phrase from the doctor when uh, he talks about our, our health. Uh, we don't like to hear this phrase from the beautician or the barber when they talk about our hair appointment. Uh, we don't like to hear this phrase from the auto mechanic when he or she speaks about our car repair. We don't like to hear this phrase from the sales representative at the mobile phone store. Uh, we don't like to hear this phrase from the HVAC maintenance man or woman after he or she diagnoses our AC or furnace. We don't like to hear this phrase from our child's principal as he or she discusses our child's behavior. We don't like to hear this phrase from a minister or speaker when he or she says this at the beginning of their message. The phrase that we don't like to hear is, this may take a while. This may take a while. Today's message, we're going to focus on how faithfulness and fruitfulness work together for good. Now, church, I don't know about you personally, but I'm going to be honest with you. This phrase, this may take a while, challenges my faithfulness at times. And I believe it's something that many disciples of Jesus Christ, or should I say church folks, we struggle with as well. We love to see the before picture and the after picture, but we don't like to see the stuff that happens between the before and the after. We, we don't like to admit that sometimes while our heart is slowly trying to change, our patterns are not changing. Those of you who has wa who've watched over the past two weeks know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. As we begin our introduction, I just want us to think about this. There, there are people each day who are accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Um, this is a wonderful time because we, the community of saints, the disciples, the, the body of Christ, we have the opportunity to welcome our new brothers and sisters into the kingdom of God. Many of our brothers and sisters have professed new goals and dreams that they want to accomplish as they begin their new relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's wonderful. And many of them will see some of their goals and their dreams come to pass in just a short time. However, there will be other goals and other dreams that they desire that may take a while. And they must ask themselves this important question. Am I willing to be faithful and patient to see my harvest come in due season. Church, there are people who have been dealing with sickness and disease for a season, and they haven't received their immediate healing from God. The question they must ask themselves is, am I willing to remain faithful to the Lord? as I accept his plan for my healing and recovery. There are people who have been battling with depression or addiction, 
and now they are beginning their road to recovery. In some cases, uh, these issues may take a while before people are truly delivered. And the question they must ask themselves is this, will I remain faithful to the Lord in the midst of my recovery process? Even if I slip and fall, church, there are people that have been, that have been dealing with bitterness, unforgiveness for years from something that was done to them by someone they loved and trusted. And now they're beginning the process of forgiveness. And the question they must ask themselves is, will I remain faithful to God's word when it comes to forgiveness, even when my mind or my emotions are telling me to stay bitter or angry? There are people who have just planted a church and they have hopes and dreams about what God has revealed to them about his plan for, for his ministry. Their entire vision may not be fulfilled in two weeks, two months, two years. And the question they must ask themselves is, will I remain faithful to the Lord? in spite of not seeing outwardly growth in our ministry. Let's go to our title scripture from today. John chapter 15, we're going to look at verses one and two. Uh, we've, we've highlighted this scripture over the past couple of months as we talked about obedience and pruning. And a couple of weeks ago, we we brought we um, we reviewed this scripture as we discussed God's pattern for growth and how it comes by pruning. And each time that we've covered this 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 uh, passage of of scriptures, the Holy Spirit just provides us with something different um, uh, for us to grab hold to to learn. Um, so let's read it again so that we can gain some new revelation knowledge. All right. Jesus is speaking and he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Verse one establishes that Jesus is the true vine. So that means there's some fake vines in the world. So we got to be on guard for that. But Jesus is the true vine and we need to be connected to Jesus in order for us to be connected to God, the father who is the gardener. Now, being connected to Jesus gives us life because he feeds us everything we need. And verse two shares how our heavenly father, the gardener, he, the first thing he shares is that he cuts off branches that don't produce fruit. Those branches that are not adding value, he cuts them off from the true vine. Here's the second thing that, that, that our heavenly father does. He prunes back or he cuts back. So the branch that is cut back, it's still connected to the true vine. And every branch that does bear fruit, in order for it, he does this, this cutting back so that every branch that does bear fruit, it allows it to be even more fruitful. So as part of our transformation process, God expects us the branches are the body of Jesus Christ. He expects us as disciples to grow in our ability to produce fruit. We are to pro progress from producing no fruit to producing, producing some fruit to producing more fruit. I'm going to say that again. We are to progress from producing no fruit to some fruit to more fruit. Amen.
And here's what the Holy Spirit wants us to know about God's process of cutting off and cutting back. I want us to read. I'm going to go through these key points that we have listed here. Okay. The same sensation that the fruitless branch experiences when it is cut off is the same sensation that a fruitful branch experiences when it is cut back. Okay. Second key point, the same painful sensation that happens to a person who doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ happens to those who do have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's bullet number three, the same painful sensation happens to the faithful as well as the unfaithful. The next key point, the same painful sensation that happens to those who live a fruitful life happens also to those who live an unfruitful life. The difference is the person who is cut back has a purpose that is linked to their pain. Their pain is not pointless. The purpose of the cutback is to produce more spiritual fruit in their lives and, and reflect more and more the character of Jesus Christ in their lives. And as I as I meditated on this this these verses, the Holy Spirit brought them back to my remembrance. If we go to John 16 and 33, when Jesus also says, in this world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Church, I hope we're seeing with our spiritual eyes that there is a connection between faithfulness and fruitfulness. There's a connection between faithfulness and fruitfulness. Okay. Our next slide is talking about understanding fruitfulness. Being created in the image of the Lord, we are designed to be fruitful. Okay. We are designed to be fruitful. We desire to be fruitful in the things we do. But here's the thing. Because of Satan's system of perverting the things of God, there is a huge misconception of what fruitfulness is. And this misconception is not just, um, just applies to the unsaved, but it also uh, applies to, to us who are born again disciples as well. We have a misconception also. You know, many of us believe that fruitfulness begins on the outside. We believe it begins with the material things, the money, the house, the cars, the bank account, the clothes, the trips, etc. You know, but that's not how God's fruitfulness operates. Fruitfulness starts on the inside first and then manifest on the outside. You see, many people who are perceived to be fruitful by the world's perspective are actually fruitless in the kingdom. And many people who are perceived to be fruitless by the world are actually fruitful in the kingdom of God. Okay. I know many of us in church, we, 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 we look at Genesis 1 and 22, where it says, be fruitful and multiply. And we just see it from the natural side of things, you know, having children and prosperity, outward growth. We don't necessarily look at being fruitful from the spiritual side, where in the New Testament, it talks, we, the scripture teaches us about the fruit of the spirit, okay? They talk about the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. We don't, that doesn't come to mind when we think about fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is producing 
the attributes of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen. And many people lose the fact that the material things are the byproducts of first seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's Matthew 6 and 33. Faithfulness is an eternal, eternal state of being. And we see this clearly illustrated in our scripture that's listed. Psalms chapter one, verses one through three. Scripture says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Praise God. A tree that is planted by the rivers of waters yields fruit in due season. There is a time and a season for fruit to come forth. And here's the thing. Let's 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 look at this personally. Sometimes we may not look fruitful on the outside. But here's the thing we need to remember. As long as we're planted in the word of God and we are we are abiding with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are growing, church. We are growing. And here's the key. In due season, the growth that we are experiencing on the inside will manifest as fruit on the outside. I remember growing up um, in in. And in, in our backyard, we had a tree. And when I was growing up, that tree did not look like it looks today. Today, that tree is humongous. It is the it is the humongous. Uh, it is the largest tree in that backyard, and it just takes up so much space. But when I grew up, it didn't look much of a tree much like a tree at all. In fact, many times I thought it was going to wither away and die, but just because it didn't look like it was growing on the outside, it was growing. It was building its root system to be able to be the tree that it is today that we see today. Amen. Church, as we're growing, as we're planted near the rivers, and we stay rooted and grounded in God and rooted and grounded in his, in his word. Our role in this process of fruitfulness is to remain faithful, to remain planted in God's word, in his ways, and in his plans for us. And we must always remember this. When we are planted in Jesus, when we're planted near that stream of living water, there is always something growing, something maturing, and something coming alive inside of our lives, church. Here's the thing about fruitfulness. The fruit that we produce is not to benefit just us. Our fruitfulness also is to benefit those that are in our circle as well. We produce fruit so that others can benefit from our fruit as well. Think about a fruit on a tree. That tree does not eat its own fruit. The fruit that's produced by that tree is for the benefit of others to come and enjoy. So if we're always serving ourselves and not others, then our fruit will rot, church. It's, it will serve no benefit at all. 
Church, I hope we see this. I hope we see this. You know, the problem with so many of us today in the church is this. We want to be fruitful without being faithful. I'm going to say that again. Many of us in the church want to be fruitful without being faithful. We want to be prosperous without being planted in the principles which produce prosperity. I'm going to say that again. Many want to be fruitful without being faithful. We want to be prosperous without being planted in the principles which produces prosperity. And having this mindset will lead us to destruction, church. It will lead us to destruction. Let's go on to our next page as this um, as we go more in depth on this, this principle. Um, and bef before, but before we read Proverbs 28 and 20, let me share something that the Holy Spirit wants us to understand. Church, one of the reasons many, many disciples struggle with changing their patterns and being inconsistent with achieving effective change in their lives is because we operate with an all or nothing mindset. We operate with an all or nothing mindset. What does that mean? If we fail one time, we perceive in our minds, in our, in, we, was, we, we perceive we blew it and that's it. And we do this to the point that we feel or we identify with being a failure. So with this failure mentality, we may end up telling ourselves, I failed, so just forget it, you know? Key point, being faithful, being consistent isn't the same as being perfect, church. There is a difference. Being faithful is allowing ourselves some grace when it comes to making changes in our patterns, but not giving up on changing our patterns, okay? We have to give ourselves some grace, but we shouldn't give up on changing our patterns. If we miss a day, don't miss two days. If we miss two days, don't miss three days. The key, church, is to keep going and not to give up on the process because God has already given us everything we need in order to do what he has called us to do. Amen. Let's read Proverbs 28 and 20. A faithful or right-minded man will abound in, with blessings, but he who hurries to be rich will not go unpunished. A faithful, a consistent, a right-minded person will abound with blessings. That means blessings mean they will have a fruitful experience. But he who hurries to be rich will not go unpunished. Those are the people who want the spoils of riches, but they don't want to be faithful. They don't want to apply the godly principles associated with being faithful and patient. You know, so many of us want the quick fix. So many of us want the quick formula. So many of us want that pixie dust so that it can produce immediate results in our lives. Doesn't work like that, church. Doesn't work like that all the time. And because people are not patient in God's process of fruitfulness, they give up. And the thing is, they don't really understand. Folks don't realize the eternal consequences associated with this approach. Many folks are going to transition from time and go to heaven. And they're going to realize they missed out on receiving some eternal rewards because of their unfaithfulness. Their unfaithfulness prevented them from experiencing God's for fruitfulness, not only in the now time, but also in eternity. Church, we gotta, we gotta make decisions using 
and eternal mindset. So important. Let's go back to our title scripture, John 15, 1 and 2, where it talks about every branch, every branch, whether it produces fruit or doesn't produce fruit, gets cut. So it made me go back to my, my childhood memories. My father enjoyed working in the yard and he, when we first moved into the house that we grew up in, he, he planted bushes around the, per, the perimeter of our home. And there would be certain times of the seasons where he would trim those bushes. I think we had some azaleas, some japonicas, some other, some other types of bushes as well. But my brothers and my brothers and I, we didn't, we didn't like that too much because we knew when he was out with the trimmer, trimming the bushes that he was going to call us to come outside or, or stop what we were doing. If we were outside to assist him with picking up the branches. And if we had friends over, sometimes uh, they would, they would leave us to the work all by ourselves and not help. And I don't blame him for that because I probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> but before we would begin picking up the branches that my, 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 my father cut, I would, I would look at those bushes and uh, and I'd, I'd examine them because many of them didn't have any leaves on them. Most of them were just branches and they didn't, it was, it, it, would, it was just mostly branches and vines. And I would say to myself, ooh, that looks ugly. You know, those, those bushes look ugly now, you know. They looked fine before, but now they look terrible. Why would, why would my dad cut off something that looked fine? It, at least it looked fine from my vantage point at the time. And, and uh, but now it looks ugly. And the Holy Spirit, as I was reminiscing about that, the Holy Spirit corrected me and said, Steve, I never said in the scripture that the branches that were bearing fruit were cut off. I never said that. Many people assume that pruning means that I'm cut off. And the Holy Spirit made me understand. He said, Steve, that's what you assume when your earthly father was cutting those bushes. But when something is cut off, it means there is a lost connection and it has been set to the side. Jesus teaches us that, that when people are cut off from him, being cut off is due to a choice that that person has made to not receive or remain in his love. So church, when we are cut off, we choose not to experience the love of God in our lives. And the Holy Spirit wants us to know this, that God's love, God's love will never stop flowing toward us. His love will never stop pursuing us. His love will never stop chasing us. As the, as the praise song says, one thing remains, that your love, Lord, never fails. It never gives up and it never runs out on us. We choose to cut ourselves off from receiving God's love. It, it, it's like the waterfall. The waterfall is still flowing. But what is happening is we're positioning ourselves away from being underneath the waterfall. We choose to be cut off and thrown away to be withered and burned into the fire church. And I know it is very frustrating when life feels unfruitful to us, when we don't get that report we wanted to hear from the doctor, when we didn't get that apology that we were expecting from someone close to us, when we didn't get that engagement ring, when we don't close on that big deal that we have, when we don't get that promotion that we interviewed for, when we don't receive that approval from our, for, from our home, when we don't receive the passing grade on that exam. I'm not referring to some of the people who 
feel unfruitful because they haven't sown any seed to produce the fruit. No, that's not who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those people that haven't prepared themselves for the business deal or they didn't prepare themselves for that job interview or they didn't even apply for the job or those that didn't study for the exam until the last minute or those who chose not to be good stewards with their financing. I'm referring to those people who have sown time, who sown their time, who sown their talent, who sown their energy into something that they believe that God has prepared them for and they didn't receive it at the time they felt they would have. They've been faithful to the Lord as they prepare for their doctor's report as they prepare for their, their big deal or for their job or interview or their exam. And yet they feel unfruitful because they've what they've sown into has not come to pass church. Those are the people that I'm talking about. Church, the Lord wants me to share this with you today who may be dealing with this right now. Feeling unfruitful is different from being unfruitful. Feeling unfruitful is different from being unfruitful. We must understand, church, that the times when we feel unfruitful and frustrated are the times where God is preparing and tilling and cultivating our character for the greatest gift he's going to give to us, church. He's developing these fruits of the spirit in us to position us for the, for the grace, for the blessings that he has in store for us. Because he wants us to receive his grace, his blessings. And not only of that, not only that, he wants us to be good stewards of the grace and the blessings that he shares with us. He doesn't want us to waste it. Amen. Jesus is saying to us that the branch that bears fruit is not cut off, but it's cut back, church. The branch that is pruned or purged is not cut off, church, but it's cut back. There is a distinct difference from being cut off and being cut back. When we are cut off, the pain comes and we are cut off because we fail to not remain in Christ, which makes us bitter. But when we are cut back and we remain in him and we're still connected with him, with our faithfulness in his word and in his promises, church, it makes us better instead of bitter. Amen. It makes us better instead of bitter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy Spirit, teach us today. Keep teaching us, church. Keep teaching us, Holy Spirit. Church, we are going to close out by illustrating how faithfulness and fruitfulness work together for good. Romans chapter 8, verses 28, 29. Romans chapter 8, verses 28, 29. Scripture reads, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknew, foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren all things church good bad and different work for good i'm gonna say that again all things work for good it is good for who verse 28 tells us it is good for those who love god so when we love god with the same love that he loves us with that agape love that agape love will produce faithfulness, church. Think about it. When we love our spouse, when we love our children, 
our family, our church family, our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors, as God loves us with that same agape love. The love that we have for our brothers and sisters remains faithful to them, regardless of whatever happens in our relationship with them. Okay. And then verse 29 tells us why this is going to work for our good. Because all things we experience, good, bad, or indifferent, will help us to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. This means that this transformation process results in fruitfulness. Do we see the connection here? Do we see the connection between faithfulness and fruitfulness in this passage? Church, let me, let me share a personal te testimony with you. There was a time about six years ago when I, I, I felt like the Lord had cut me off from an opportunity in my life. It was a job opportunity, um, a promotional opportunity, a good fit that I, I believed that I was qualified for. You know, I sought guidance from the Holy Spirit and and received confirmation to apply for the job. I went through the interview process and I was confident that I did well, you know, time had, had passed, you know, and I found out, hey, I was one of the top candidates for getting a job. I spoke to the Lord and I said to him, as I was waiting that whatever is your will with regards to this position, I'll serve you. A couple of more weeks passed. And I received a call from the hiring manager, and this person told me that, that they decided to go with another person. But there was a moment, as soon as I got through speaking um, with the hiring manager, there was a moment where I was disappointed, and I felt like I was being cut off. I had that feeling of unfruitfulness and I was frustrated. And then I remembered the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance what I had said to the Lord about my commitment to serve him regardless of what came about. And as a result of me, my remembering that conversation, I reframed my faith. And I got myself back on track. A couple of months later passed and uh, I received word from Pastor Spradley that he wanted me to serve as pastor of Covenant of Grace Ministries and that he would support me in this journey. And, and as I reflect back on that, I can clearly see that the Lord put me back from that opportunity at work on purpose because he was preparing me for a higher calling in his kingdom. He had a better opportunity for me at that time in his kingdom. It wasn't the right time, nor was it the right season for me to make that transition um, with that job based on what he saw was coming. You see, God sees things from the 40,000 feet level. And that's why we have to be faithful to him, because even when we don't know, he knows, church. And because we are with him and he's with us, that should give us peace. Amen. Last year, the job that I applied for six years ago became available again. Here is another opportunity. Again, I sought the Lord's counsel. And he, he, he gave me direction to apply for that position again. I interviewed, and guess what happened? I didn't get that job for the second time. But that's not the end of the story. Let me explain, explain to you what God did. Instead of getting the job that I applied for, I was offered a new position that was created just for me. And here's the thing, if I would have never interviewed for the first job, I would have never had the opportunity to be thought of for this new position that they created for me. 
Do you see the goodness of God? Do you see the faithfulness of God in due season, church? God is so good. I give him praise. Hallelujah. Church, God cuts us back so that we can grow better than we were before. God cut me back from that position so that he can grow me so that I could be better positioned to be able to manage this, this new position at this time. He, God cuts us back to get us prepared for our season of fruitfulness, church. God is not cutting us off, but he's cutting us back and he is preparing us for a bigger and better harvest. He's got something better in store for you, church. He's got something better in store for us. If the Lord cuts it back, then it's coming back, church. If the Lord cuts it back, then it's coming back, church. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's coming back, church. Our joy is coming back, church. Our peace is coming back. Our love is coming back. Our faith is coming back. Our tenderness is coming back. Our self-control is coming back. Our goodness is coming back. Our meekness is coming back. Our patience is coming back. Our gentleness is coming back. Hallelujah. What does the scripture say to us to encourage us? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy is here right now, church. All we have to do is open up our spiritual eyes and wake up and receive his joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants us to grab hold of this church. The Lord wants us to grab hold of this key point. Amen. Life may make the cut. But our Heavenly Father is holding the scissors. <laughs> Life may make the cut, but our Heavenly Father is holding the scissors. This, uh, ch this should change our perspective on the pain we experience from being cut back. Church, so, so many times we focus so much on our pain from the cut. See how folks treat me. See how my job treats me. See how my family treats me. See how this illness is treating me. See how my circumstances are treating me. Church, this is what we need to understand. No matter how much life may cut us, our Heavenly Father controls our destiny. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father controls our destiny. The scripture says in John 15 and 1 that our Heavenly Father is the gardener and he knows where to cut back. He knows how to cut back. He knows when to cut back in order to make it grow back better. Church, I understand the frustration we experience when we have sown into something that means so much to us. Uh, uh, we sown so much into someone or something and, and, and that person or, or that thing lets us down. Amen. I also understand being the person who has let down someone who has sown something into something that is important to them. And I failed them. I know the frustration of feeling unfruitful, but know this church, we are not unfruitful and we are not cut off. Know that we are just cut back, but we're, and we're still connected to Jesus, who is the true vine church. I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to remain faithful, to remain patient, and stay connected 
to Jesus Christ. Know that in due season, our harvest is coming. Amen. Our harvest is coming. Stay faithful to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are finished with today's message. Um, next week, we're going to be teaching um, part two of this series that's titled, It May Take a While. And our focus will be centered on the connection between faithfulness and patience. All right. Thank you again for joining us today. Before we close with our prayer and benediction, just want to share a few ways that you can support uh, this kingdom ministry. First thing, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. In addition to subscribing, click the notification icon so you will be alerted when new messages have been posted. Secondly, if this message has blessed you, please Share this message with someone in your circle so that they can be blessed as well. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in deciding who you share the message with. Thirdly, we appreciate your support through your prayers of encouragement for Pastor Spradley and I as we continue to be led by the Holy Spirit um, to share these messages with you. And finally, if you want to plant a financial seed to this ministry. We have the information available on the screen for you to give. We are so grateful for the many ways that you continue to support Covenant of Grace Ministries. Don't forget, don't forget Thursday. Thursday is prophetic soundbite day. Pastor Spradley will be delivering another awesome word for us, another rich dose of God's word that will encourage you and uplift our souls. Amen. And now we're going to close with our prayer and benediction. Lord, we are so thankful to you today. We are so grateful that we don't have to walk in the works of the flesh. Because of your grace, we can surrender to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit inside of us. But it all begins, Lord, by repenting of our dead works and placing our faith in your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. In addition, Father, we submit to the governing authority of the Holy Spirit, and we ask that his divine nature be manifested in us to produce his supernatural fruit in and through us. Father, help us to hear and obey your word. Empower us by your grace to remain faithful during our times of being cut back. May your word have first and last say in all that we do. Also, Lord, just give us the grace to remain faithful in your word so that our spiritual roots can grow strong and secure and endure any circumstance or adversity that may come our way. And finally, Father, continue to prune, continue to cut back those things in our lives that displease you and help us to live fruitful lives that not only benefit us, but that benefit those people that are in our circle of influence. Lord, despite how our life, uh, our life may cut us, Lord, we know that you hold the scissors and you control our destiny. We trust in your will and your way despite our feelings or our thoughts. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us until we have the blessed opportunity to come together again in Christian fellowship. And all of God's people responded with a prayer of agreement by saying, amen. Love you all. God bless you and have a blessed week.